All right, in this lesson, we are gonna be looking at ratio analysis. The specific ratio analysis that we're gonna be looking at is called the current ratio. And this current ratio is gonna help us understand whether or not we can pay our current liabilities, which are liabilities that are due within one year or the operating cycle of a business, whichever is longer, with the available current assets that we have now. So that's what we're looking at. So let's get started here with a review of ratio analysis. So ratio analysis is a way to get a quick look at different aspects of the company's financial company's financials. By doing ratio analysis, one can compare the current results with the past or maybe the expected as well as other competitors. So what I love about ratio analysis is not only do we get to look at whether or not are we improving from last year or the year before or over 10 years time, but how are we doing against the industry? So a lot of times we take these ratio analysis um, calculations and we look at the industry and we see what the average is and we see where we are against the average. And obviously we wanna beat the average, but sometimes we can't beat the average. Maybe we are the average um, or maybe we are below the average. And if we're below the average, then we really have to think about what things can we do to improve our ratios so that we're not just at average, but we are above average amongst our peers in the industry. So that's why this is so important. Now let's take a look at the current ratio. So the current ratio measures whether, uh, whether or not we have enough current assets to sufficiently pay our current liabilities. This is really all about do can we pay our bills when they come due? Now obviously this will answer truthfully whether or not we can or can't because obviously every day that we are in business we're taking in more cash which we can then use to pay our bills but this gives us a snapshot do we think we're going to have any issues if business was to stop today and we had to pay those bills today so what is the current ratio well, the current ratio starts with the current assets divided by the current liabilities, that's gonna give us current ratio. So I said in the last lesson on the balance sheet that there's a reason why we see totals for current assets and current liabilities, because they have to do with ratio analysis. This is the reason why. If we summarize those up on the balance sheet, we can just pull those numbers off really quickly, do this current ratio analysis to kind of see, do we have enough assets to be able to pay our short-term obligations? Now, what are we looking for? Well, we are looking for a current ratio of at least 1.0. Now, does that mean that you're doing bad if you don't have a 1.0? No, not necessarily, but we wanna see a 1.0. That's like the best result we can get. This means that we can pay all of our current liabilities with all of our current assets and maybe have some left over. Now, some would say, well, don't you want more than one, like two, three, four? Sure, but most businesses don't. Um, maybe because they're just operating on a very lean scale. So if they can get to 1.0, that's a really good number in the eyes of uh, current ratios. Now, what does that mean? That means that if business was to stop today, we can sell all of our current assets and take that money, pay all of our current liabilities, and we would be golden for at least a year, right? Because we still have long-term liabilities to think about, and we're not even thinking about that, we're just thinking of our current liabilities. And the reason why this is so important is because we as managers have to make sure that we can pay our current obligations when they come due, otherwise we're gonna have problems later down the line. How? Well, if we stop paying our vendors, they're not gonna sell us the goods that we need so that we can sell to our customers. So we wanna make sure that we keep our vendors happy so they continue to help us flourish down the line. If we stop paying, they're gonna stop giving us stuff, which means that we can't sell products to our customers, which means revenues decline, which means we go out of business. So super important here. Now, this is an assumption that we may not need to pay off all of our current liabilities now, uh, because we really don't. So this assumes that we have to pay all of our current liabilities now. That's why we're taking a look at the current ratio. We don't. Obviously, you might have sales coming in over the next couple of months, and you can use that money to pay your current liabilities, not necessarily your current assets. So let's take a look at the calculation here using an example. We're gonna use Facebook as an example. Now, I know this is really tiny, um, but 
Uh, I'll try to point out the numbers so that you can see them. So this is their consolidated balance sheet. You've seen this before. Their consolidated balance sheet shows us that their current assets for 2018 is 50 billion 480 million because these are all in millions so one on here means 1 million so 50,480 means 50 billion 480 million dollars um, and then we're looking for our current liability so current liabilities here is 7 billion 17 million so again big numbers all right so we've got those two numbers packed down here let's look at our current ratio uh, equation we have current assets over current liabilities so uh, what is our current assets our current assets is 50 billion 480 we're going to divide that by Facebook's current liabilities in this case it's 7 billion 17 million if we divide those two we get something that looks like 7.19 obviously way better than 1.0 so that they're doing really good uh, but um, we want to make sure that they can pay their li current liabilities. They could literally pay their current liabilities and have no current liabilities. So you might be asking, well, then if they can pay all their current liabilities, why don't they pay their current liabilities? Well, uh, if we look at here, uh, accrued expenses and current liabilities. So that's where a bulk of it is. That means that they've incurred this expense, but maybe the bill hasn't come yet. So that's why they haven't paid it off. So that's normal there. So that's probably why that they haven't paid it off because they haven't gotten a bill. If you don't get a bill, you don't have to pay. If you don't have to pay, you can take that money, put it in a savings account, earn a little bit of interest before you actually have to pay. That's a personal finance thing later on. All right, so that's current ratios, 7.194. So we know that's good because it's over 1.0, but how good is it? Well, we don't have industry averages, but if we were to get the industry average for a company like Facebook, uh, we can compare that with this. So we might look at Snapchat, we might look at Twitter, we might look at LinkedIn, we might look at um, some of these other social media platforms and compare that with this. We're now at a point with Facebook that we can actually probably uh, compare this with Google because they're both running uh, pretty much an advertising company, right? How does Facebook make money? They advertise, they use the spaces on their website to advertise to you, the user, um, some type of product or service, and then they get paid for that. So again, we might be able to take this and compare that with Google and see where Google is, even though they're different types of platforms. So that's what we need to do next is to look at this against the industry to see how well this is against the industry. But Generally speaking, they're doing good because it's over 1.0. So that is a look at the current ratio, the ratio analysis, um, trying to get a quick snapshot picture of what's going on in the organization. In this case, we're looking at the liquidity nature of it. Can they pay their short-term obligations with their short-term assets? So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw. Share it with someone. And if you want to help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.